welcome back to the bench so I'm gonna just this is a very quick video uh, this is the enclosed version of my isolation transformer and dim bulb tester slash current sharing device uh, I've been using something along these lines for quite a long time this is just the first time it's all in one enclosure I, I needed to replace the isolation transformer with something a little better and actually when it's working uh, especially before getting into uh, the radio with the uh, the radio chassis off to the left there this RCA the new tube stuff it's got a little bit more voltage in it uh, I'm okay with working obviously with battery kind of stuff but once you get into AC um, I'm not too thrilled with working on things that have 120 volts across the chassis and that does I've tested it you can you can measure 110 volts from the line side all the way to the chassis anywhere on the chassis including the knob so if you pick one of these radios up and it's missing knobs don't do something dumb like plug it in and grab the bare knob because you're going to get a tuck uh, it's going to be more than a tickle uh, you'll get that very familiar 60 cycle hum and if you've been doing this for any amount of time you know exactly what i'm talking about so your best tool to protect yourself and the equipment on your bench is your brain so go out do your research understand it make sure you understand it do not mimic the monkey i cannot stress this enough you can get hurt you can get killed please be careful having said all that just a real quick rundown of the box the enclosure is two different types of wood because i'm not a carpenter uh, you can probably notice by the fact that there's no shiny sheen on this and in addition you can see where I've covered some of the nails with uh, with putty uh, but everything that I need is there and it is fully functional and that's really all I care about it does kind of have a little bit of an old-timey look I've been told it looks like a quamuk a quok kuakuma qua, uh, some kind of a bear dog thing anyway and it does seem to have kind of a weird face if you look at it there's like a crooked smile thing going on there I don't know but the point is it measures about ten and a quarter inches I have no idea what that is in metric sorry uh, it squared and I only I made it square because it was just easier to cut four pieces of wood to the same length uh, you'll notice that all the corners are round little little uh, tri little trip for those non carpenters uh, real carpenters aren't afraid of corners I am because I'm not one so there's no corners on this box it's all uh, rounded off just to kind of hide some of the seams which actually weren't all that bad but still uh, and also I'm kind of dumb and I bang my head a lot so I figured round would be better uh, the bulbs that are on top are actually the original bulbs that I've had basically ever since I put this bench in this house and started playing around with stuff as the first dim bulbs that I had they're gonna last forever because they just do they're they're not seeing a lot of current they're not in use very often so they just last a long time the fixtures are new uh, they're very small fixtures uh, I, I think they're about two inches they are an inch and a half and everything works pretty well uh, the uh, the the toggle switches were a couple of bucks a piece from the local hardware store they have a really good sound to them so uh, and just to keep the video moving along I don't want to get bogged down or anything the the volt and amp meter or ammeters are very they're not very accurate however at 120 degrees or 120 volts it's dead on RMS and I set it like that I'm just using it for kind of a reference to get to where I need to be as far as amperage goes uh, again you'll see it uh, when it's when it's demonstrated it, it does work it just tells me gives me a visual cue but I'm not really using it for the number um, and I'm just gonna give you a quick demonstration of how this thing actually is used so what I'm doing when I'm testing is looking for a short uh, and I want to use my uh, adjust a volt which is off to the left and I would dial that down to zero I would make sure everything was off here then I would turn on the adjust a volt then come over and flip this switch like so and you saw the volts jump and of course now we can go ahead and start ramping up our voltage on our adjust a volt once we've done that as we start to come up if we see a short those bulbs will start to glow now if I had it all the way up to 120 volts like it's set right now basically 
plug something in and flip the switch, it's still going to limit or at least share that current. So essentially what happens is this plug is going to act as our short. It's just two wires shorted together in a cap. So when I plug this in and flip it on, watch the bulbs and watch the current. Ready? That's the wrong switch. That's the right switch. So just lights everything up. You saw the amps uh, jump a little bit and that's it. So no arcs, no sparks. That's exactly what we want. We're just trying to limit the current. And of course I can duplicate that process. Uh, don't do this at home, but see, it's just not gonna source any current uh, across here. Um, once it's completed circuit, there's no more potential here. It's all, all gone away. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and reorient the camera. Keep in mind, it's not finished yet. I do have some things that I want to add to it, but uh, we'll just take a quick look in the back and uh, then we'll look at the circuit and see uh, how that works. And, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so keeping in mind that, again, everything is just tentatively got caps connecting everything. That's going to change once we get our fuse and uh, possibly a light, uh, some dial lights uh, these are the neons that I had thought about putting in there but I was told by somebody that knows a little bit more has been around the block a few times uh, they're rated for 117 volts and I did play around with them I put a, a drop resistor uh, in series with them and and they they looked okay but the room had to be almost black in order to actually read the dial which I was told by someone turned out that was that was pretty accurate so uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to use them or not, um, but that'll be for another video at another time. Basically, that's a good thing about these things is they're continuously upgradable. You can change them or make them do whatever you want them to do. Uh, and in this case, we're going for simplicity. So from the back, you can. It's, this is our beat up dented uh, transformer. I decided to go ahead and leave uh, the guards on uh, just because uh it's not hurting anything the way it is again it's electrically okay i did uh notice the uh leads are now coming directly out of the side this has been bypassed and this is where the old fuse was now the isolation transformer is fused and i do plan on putting a fuse in here i just didn't want it uh in the transformer i don't want to really have to get into the back of this to service it so possibly next to the other switch i may just go ahead and put a front mounted fuse in or I had thought about a push button or a settable breaker I really don't see blowing the fuse on this very often but that's what they're there for is for mistakes so uh, having said all that the wiring is very simple uh, this blue and brown wiring is actually from the old light uh, from the old original plug-in again uh, it was non-polarized not a huge issue I just I just feel more comfortable to polarize plug um, especially for when I'm testing devices that I do want to know what the what is supposed to be the polarization um, and then the back side of our switches uh, this is our on switch or our on off switch all the way over here to the side uh, basically we're going through the line cord through the switch and then if you follow this brown wire notice it's not twisted this is our our amperage or ammeter uh, and we're going uh, directly through so we're in line uh, uh, we're in series with the current and then that comes back down to uh, the other side of our winding so we have a completed circuit when the switch is on the voltage is just how you would probe uh, we have uh, and of course it's AC so I've twisted the lines here um, <clears throat> you have uh, basically one lead hooked to one side of the winding one lead hooked to the other and that is going to measure the voltage on the primary side of the winding uh, and it is zeroed out uh, to uh, remove any extra I guess quiescent current not that there really would be but uh, there's probably a little bit of capacitance in here uh, and then we have our other side of our our transformer um, where our circuit will show that basically this wire is just uh, just like you would hook up normal light bulbs except we're going to uh, uh, power in right here uh, go through the uh, positive then the negative and then the well the hot and the common and then through the hot and the common 
and back around and into our our uh, our outlet or uh, plug so I've got some excess wire here and I did that for a reason um, this this other wire this is our our bridge so when we flip this switch we are essentially just bypassing these lights we're just giving it a, a, a non-resistance way of travel so it's a uh, it's it's basically shorting directly across and just eliminating the the lights it's taking them out of circuit so uh, then we go back into the other side of our line cord uh, which is now where we're going to plug in our devices and that's it it is that simple uh, it didn't cost much the transformer was fifty dollars most of the wood uh, I think I bought the the outside portion of the box I think I bought that for less than eight dollars or for about eight dollars uh, I had the maple from another stereo project um, the light bulbs I'd had I think these were about a buck and a half a piece the the fixtures and I did have to make a modification to these um, <clears throat> which <laughs> I guess the short version of the story is where the the wires are and I have these soldered on here just because it was easier um, where these uh, connectors actually come through they were actually on the top side of the fixture you can't really see it in there and I had planned on uh, using an extra one and I misplaced it I was gonna show it for demonstration but it's not that difficult to kind of figure it out you can just uh, uh, unscrew the screws uh, trap for for young players though the screws there's four screws on top inside of the socket uh, three that hold on the ground plate and a fourth one that holds on the the um, uh, the hot side that is going to be their 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 left hand threads so righty tighty lefty loosey except for those screws and I messed one up that was the extra one that I had uh, I messed one up trying to take those out because I thought they were just normal screws and they're not they're actually left hand thread so uh, watch that uh, if you happen to get something that's like it but the holes across the top were really nice you notice there's not actually any screws uh, holding these in these are extremely tight I really had to push to get those to kind of twist in I had to sand the inside of the hole and they're actually uh, in there pretty securely now I'm gonna change that but I wasn't sure exactly what I'm going to do with the lights so until I kind of get that figured out uh, I haven't actually put any screws in here but it's more than usable just like this so at this point we're gonna call this one done now I am gonna just go over and show the circuit uh, we'll step over to the computer and I'll show you the circuit real quick it's pretty much just how it's laid out but you can take a screenshot and you can compare it to the other ones out there again there's different ways of setting them up this is just the way I wanted it set up for my bench uh, you you do you so uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed it uh, my view on this is I wanted something usable that wasn't piled all over the bench uh, like it used to be that entire end of my bench was completely just a mess of, of wires and uh, it just didn't feel that safe even though it was there to, to make things safer so this is much more usable uh, even you know just having that line cord being able to, to, to put this wherever I need it and not have to drag the box around again inevitably whatever you're working on the cord is just always too short to reach the isolation transformer so um, so there it is this is the way that I want it set up and it works for me maybe it might work for you or you've got a better idea or whatever and as far as the lights go I really want some lighted uh, uh, lighted dials on this but I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do it yet so we'll just have to save that for another video so we'll step over to the computer we'll look at the circuit real quick and call it a day okay so this is our circuit and again not really a lot going on here um, there is something that I do want to explain and it involves where you see the labeling of switch number two so we'll come back to that uh, there there are three switches on the front and I didn't describe the third switch the one that's all the way to the right there was a reason for it um, so looking at our schematic from left to right you see uh, uh, near the, the hot line you've got fuse number one um, or fuse one that is our fuse we physically don't have one of those yet as we're waiting uh, for them to show up uh, but uh, that will be installed when it comes in um, switch number one is going to be our on off switch of course the ammeter is in series is exactly as described um, 
so that the current will flow through the meter. Uh, and then the volt meter is exactly like you would probe uh, uh, from for potential uh, across two points while you're you're testing for voltage. And then the last uh, little component is the primary side of the coil on the transformer. So that's essentially that portion of the circuit. The second portion of the circuit <clears throat> is where things. I just want to give a little explanation here. Uh, obviously, if you know what this is, it this need, I don't need to tell you this. But but for those of you that are just starting, um, I would highly recommend that you don't install this. Just ignore this. This is a bridge. This takes these current limiting bulbs out of circuit. It's giving it a low impedance or no impedance practically passage around those bulbs because it once you close that switch it basically becomes a wire and the electricity is going to take the path of least resistance right so the current's not going to want to flow through the bulbs it's going to flow around the bulbs which essentially means you're taking them out of circuit uh, this is for once i have things all uh, repaired and I want to make sure that everything's working properly and I want to do some, some additional current testing without lighting up the dim bulbs. And I can go ahead and flip that switch. And essentially, it's just like being plugged into the wall at that point. It's, we have no more current limiting. So I would highly recommend you don't add that to your circuit if you're just starting out. Just basically leave that off. Now, I also... <clears throat> I'm going to double check and triple check and quadruple check that switch every time before I turn this box on. And it's the reason why I put it on the opposite side away from the light switch and away from the power on switch so they didn't inadvertently turn it on. Uh, but I still would check it, check it, check it. Um, so I hope that makes sense. If you're doing this for the first time, again, I can't stress this enough. Anytime you're playing with electricity, you're doing so at your own risk. There's a lot of potential for, for bad things to happen. Uh, and I'm certainly not going to be responsible for you shoving a butter knife into an outlet any more than I am you not understanding how these circuit works, these circuits work, and 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 causing damage to yourself. I don't want that to happen. So, again, your brain is your best tool. Make sure you're using it, and don't just follow this. These aren't to be instructions. This is just me showing you. This is how I did this. So use extreme caution but i would definitely if especially if you're a novice just leave switch number two and that entire wire off of there uh no reason no reason to incorporate it until you're a little bit more comfortable but that's about it so uh until the next video uh i do have some things to do with the radio uh that things are looking pretty good with that there's a lot of research that's, that's taken place and i'm learning new things about it uh, and, and it looks like this is, I, I, I had voltage going through the chassis long enough to heat up the tubes enough. I heard static, uh, coming across, across the speaker. So that's with no antenna hooked up. I have some hopes for this chassis. I don't think it's going to be, I think it's going to, I think we're going to be able to make a complete repair now. How nice it's going to be. I don't know. We shall see, but, uh, I'm, I'm stoked. So until the next video, uh, take care of yourselves, uh, be nice to yourself, be nice to each other, and don't mimic the monkey.